Hello, welcome to another video by Mox and Marine. A little bit under the weather, so my voice is going to crack a little bit probably in this video, but uh, I'll, I'll bear through it. Um, so I'm building a 4.3 liter V6 for a customer, and um, he provided the, uh, this is a Volvo Penta system, or he's going to go in a Volvo Penta boat, so it's still a DM 4.3 liter V6. And um, the customer provided his own head gaskets, so I'm just uh, documenting that that's what I'm using. And these, these gaskets um, feel a little bit uh, kind of flimsy, I, honestly, compared to the Felpros I normally use. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and use them and uh, put it together with these marine gaskets. So um, as you can see, I've got uh, the, uh, this will be the uh, even side, that's two, four, and six, ready to go. And if I just put the cylinder head on it and bolt it down. Once I get the cylinder heads on it, and uh, I'm going to paint it, and um, the customer's, uh, that's a uh, oil pan, and it's a uh, car or truck oil pan, and um, I use that because the customer's oil pan was very corroded, and uh, I'm going to paint over that, so I wanted a very clean, uh, smooth surface to paint on, and uh, the customer's oil pan was so corroded I couldn't use it, so I'm going to use this one instead. There was a small hole in this one, and uh, so I, what I've done is uh, put a piece of JB Weld or made some epoxy and JB Weld to that hole so that um, it'll seal up the hole so it won't leak. Okay, I'm now doing the other side. This will be the odd side of the engine. This is cylinders one, three, and five. I'm putting a marine head gasket. This is a Volvo Penta uh, factory marine, gad, marine head gasket. Okay, continue with this 4.3 rebuild. I'm now about to install the intake manifold. It took considerable amount of uh, cleaning and scrubbing and wire brushing to get all the rust off of it. It's very corroded down in here. I'm not sure if the thermostat will seal perfectly, but there is a good, there's a decent surface right here for the gasket to seal again, so I guess that'll hold. Um, back here, just scrape a lot of the rust out of here and clean it up. Got it to where I, um, I'm gonna paint it when I'm done here. So, uh, it's ready to put, uh, install. So I'm going to use the customer provided, uh, this gasket set. It's Volvo Penta 835-5807. Well, must, must have start with 385. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But anyway, um, yeah, that's a typo. Look at there. So you got 835. 835-5807. Up here you got 385-5807. I thought so. So that's it. that's weird. The uh, label's got a typo on it. Okay, I'm checking the fit of these gaskets, these Bavo Penta gaskets, uh, to make sure they will cover this corrosion right here. And I'll be honest, these are some stout gaskets. These are probably some of the best quality gaskets I've seen in these applications. It's got a metal uh, back backbone or metal structure with the rubber seals, and these are stout. These things probably cost over $100. I think the uh, Felpro metal ones cost about $60. So these are really good. And uh, So if I lay this gasket on here, it looks like it covers up the uh, corrosion pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to finish this up and get them installed. This engine will be running tonight. I've got a complication with the throttle linkage here hitting the intake manifold. I've got a, a Put a thicker spacer, a thicker uh, gasket underneath the carburetor to raise it up. I've got already got that. Um, that the oil dip dipstick did not fit because this is a uh, automotive oil pan, and it, this uh, drain is recessed back compared to the marine version. Um, so I've got to. Uh, I, I guess I'm not going to use this drain like this. I'm just put a plug in there and use a Mercruiser uh, oil dipstick. Um, Got to work that out. And I have to get make sure the level on the dipstick is correct. Um, other than those two items, uh, I've got to buy a new ignition coil for the back of the motor because the old one is uh, still functioning, but it's very corroded and um, just needs to be replaced. So, but uh, I do have a spare coil so I can get this running tonight. Oh, and alternator wiring is um, kind of strange. I don't know those I don't know those colors. I got to figure those colors out. Continue with the build of a 4.3 V6. This is a Volvo Penta engine. I've just cleaned the uh, starboard exhaust manifold. I got all the rust out of here. Um, washed it, blow dried it, got it clean. Uh, brought wire brushed the surfaces. Also cleaned off the gasket surface for the riser. 
Um, so the customer provided the uh, exhaust manifolds, uh, excuse me, exhaust manifold gaskets. It's, uh, sorry, the battery died a little bit. It's a uh, Volvo Penta 385 3412. There's two of them. And uh, I'm going to use these gaskets. Uh, it looks like it's what came off the engine, so I'm going to use these to put it back together. So I'm about to mount the starboard exhaust manifold with these gaskets, and then I'll mount the uh, clean and mount the port side and put the risers on. Here's a useful tip for when you want to put an exhaust manifold on an engine on a stand. The engine is vertical. Um, I have the option of turning to horizontal, but um, it's kind of heavy and I don't want to do that right now. So um, the first step is that I use studs to uh, on the farthest corners to for two purposes. One, to hold the gasket in place, and two, to um, act as a guide. So when I put the exhaust manifold on, it's not it once it's, it slides on and it takes the weight off the exhaust manifold. But um, when you put the gasket on over the studs, it tends to want to sag down. And um, if you look at the holes, they're not, sometimes the, the, the hole in the gasket is low, down lower than the hole in the block by just a little bit. So what I like to do is put a piece of tape on there and uh, use the tape to lift the gasket up to its highest point, and, uh, which I generally find is more, uh, more suitable or, or better fit on the, the gasket on the head. And if you put the tape in a lo certain location, you can then, once you get the manifold on, you can reach underneath and either and pull it off or pull it off from the top. So um, I've got this gasket held on by tape, and it's also held on by the studs. And now I'm about to slide the exhaust manifold on. So the exhaust manifold is over here, and um, it had a considerable amount of rust in it. I've cleaned that out, um, cleaned off the uh, also the right of the gasket surface also. So I'm about to slide this uh, port side the exhaust manifold on. Okay, now I have the exhaust manifold in place. I slid it on the two studs on the end, and then I put a bolt in here and here next to the two end bolts and uh, snugged it up tight. And then I reached down in here with some uh, needleless pliers and the screwdriver and pulled the tape out. So this manifold is uh, now about to be installed permanently with the rest of the bolts. And then uh, I look up this hose. The uh, port side goes here, and the starboard side goes over there on this uh, thermostat housing. And then uh, I'll install the riser and the exhaust will be done. Um, after that, the engine will be ready to be lifted up and uh, put the uh, flywheel on. Um, by the way, um, Volvo Penta's coupler, it, uh, I don't have one handy, but it, it kind of sucks. Um, so when you put a Volvo Penta system together, you slide the flywheel on, it goes, it's keyed, it only goes on one way. There's a dowel or a pin right there that keeps the flywheel just right down there keeps the flywheel on in the right location. Um, but then you slide the coupler on and then you, uh, well, the first year you installed uh, studs in the back of the flywheel, excuse me, studs in the back of the crankshaft, then you slide the flywheel on and then you slide the coupler on, then you install nuts on the, on the studs. It's a pain in the butt. You can't get a socket on them. You have to put them on one at a time. Uh, sometimes tighten them by hand uh, and then snug them down a wrench because you can't get a socket on them. It's just a really dumb way to do it. Mercury's way is much better. I'm now installing my Delco EST uh, coil. This is my custom bracket. I powder coated red to match the rest of the engine. And um, I'm uh, installing the coil on the back of the cylinder head, um, but the lifting bracket goes underneath the coil. So you have to space the coil out. You can see I've got a couple of washers behind the coil bracket so that it spaces out from the block to make it um, even with the uh, or the same space out that the uh, lifting bracket does. So I'm installing that side first, and then I'll install a washer and a lot washer on top of the lifting bracket on this side, uh, on top of the coil. And I'll show what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, I'm about ready to start this Volvo Penta 4.3. And um, this is the this distributor, since this is a Volvo Penta, this system is called the Delco EST system. It's a factory Delco uh, gen general motor ignition for Marine. Uh, and Volvo Penta used this right from the factory. The Merc Cruiser did not. Um, I sell kits that convert the Merc Cruiser ignitions over to this Delco EST. Um, but anyway, this module uh, does not, even though it's got the GM logo on it, it does not appear to me to be a marine module. Um, I've never seen the marine modules with this uh, 399, uh, was that 8LD, 8L03. Um, I've seen that on trucks and cars, but I have not seen it on Marines. So I have a suspicion somebody put a truck or a car module in this motor before I got it. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it and uh, try to crank the engine, set the timing. And um, once I get the timing set, I'll know instantly whether this is a Marine module or not. And I'll show you how to get, how to figure that out when I get there. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook, hook it up and try to run it with this module and see what we get. 